Welcome to a special edition of Crawford County Outdoors. We've got Crawford County Outdoors' newest hunter, Lulu, with us here, Terry. Yes. Welcome back, Terry Beck, by the way. It's been a while, huh? Yeah, it's been too long. <clears throat> so uh, we got Lulu out for her first hunt here. Hey, by the way, give give a little history on Lulu. Uh, she's just turned a year old now, just right? Just a year old, yes. She's uh, <clears throat> it's her third time out. Or, yeah, she's only been out hunting three times. Um, and uh, she is uh, she's doing very well. So she is from a line. She's wild. She's, she's wild. from a line of labs. That's that's uh, kind of hunt, hunt at lovers. Yeah, here. I, we, yeah, she's a lover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's local. hunters. Hunters too. Yes, she's local. Um, Cambridge Springs on the Fry Road, Crabtree Kennels. <laughs> so I I've been I've been hunting with labs and with Springer Spaniels for a long time and and. Um, She's a lot of fun to have along on a hunt here, so we made it a point to, to get out to the uh, uh, Chase's Flying Frenzy here uh, right. a, a short, short time ago, and that was a nice day, by the way. That was a gorgeous weather, and the leaves were starting to turn, and it was still pretty warm, but... Uh, it was a great day. T talk about talk about Lulu's <coughs> preparation to get her, ready to get her ready for that point. Well, basically, um, you know me, I don't, I'm not all into it. I just, um, pheasant wings. You gave me pheasant wings, I cut them off. Um, tie them to a string, I throw them out, she retrieves them. I go and hide them in the, hide them in the brush and she'll go ahead and find them. Um, that's basically all I do and now one of the things let that, instinct take over. One of the things that, that, that sometimes you have young dogs sensitive to the shot going off for the first time. What'd you do, what'd you yep. do with that one? I also had a cap gun. So I threw the wings out, made her sit. I shoot the cap gun up in the air and she never flinched. Yeah, she's been really good. The gun does not bother her at all. So there's an excitement level with the dog. If they're doing something that they really like and that, you know, they get used to that sharp noise or whatever, I think yeah. that's, people, I, I've, heard, I've seen people take the dog out to the trap range or whatever. And mm -hmm. I, I've always thought that was a mistake because that's, that's, that's a whole different scenario. They're, they don't have that excitement first. They're right, excited to go right, someplace, right. but just bang, 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 after you, one after yeah. another after another. That's a little bit different. She's definitely a people person, as you can see. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she loves the social aspect of hunting for sure. So she gets out and she runs and runs and runs until she's tired and then she starts to hunt a little bit better. Now that first day that we went out, um, she was very curious about what was going on and some birds were stocked there for her and so for the first couple of birds she was on her own. Yes, she was doing very well. If you remember correctly, you and I were still pre-game. It was, it, was pre <laughs> it was a pre-season and the shooting wasn't, our, our wasn't shooting perfect, was <laughs> wasn't, wasn't perfect, kind of like the NFL, you know, the That's referees right. don't have it exactly right until they get to, well, they sometimes don't have it right, That's right. no yeah. matter what, but, but uh, you yeah, know, we weren't, we weren't on, our, on, our, on our first game, so the first bird went up and Lulu did a great job, she found a bird and you and I didn't find a bird no. with our guns, but no. she didn't, she didn't, uh, she didn't care, she went right after her and got, got after that That's next right. one, so, you, did you forgive us, Lulu, for missing that first one for you? She okay. was on what last year too. You were sitting on your lap as a puppy, <laughs> <laughs> and she went on me. So yeah. yeah, she's she's quite the she's quite the affectionate girl. Hey, hey, okay, that's enough. You, you gotta you gotta ham it up for the camera, Lulu. Yes, you're yep. a good girl. So we had Lulu on her own for a couple of birds to get used there, and, and so we broke we broke out Crash here to let him uh, get out there, and maybe maybe show her a little bit more. Yeah, he, uh, so of course Crash, he's he's uh, very very much experienced both with um, uh, at the preserve hunting and and out at the game lands, mm -hmm. and so she did a good job I think of, of kind of following his lead and, and working. Now yeah. she works very well. The the cover was very strong that it was very, still still pretty high. Yeah. And no leaves had started to fall yet. And that switchgrass really was really thick. If you remember, both dogs had cuts under their eyes and their nose and, and but neither one cared because it's no, like they didn't man, care. I love doing that so mm -hmm. it's like oh, we'll scrape here and there I can I can handle that no but crash was did really well with her it didn't uh, he was all business and which that's what you need with a puppy you need a, a good dog that a, a good lead dog that's all business and doesn't want to play so she kind of followed she kind of <coughs> followed crash a little bit uh, along there and and mm -hmm. um, I think we had a bird not too far into the hunt that uh, went up and we actually both did hit that one we did and uh, so we had to kind of backtrack to go and pick up the bird and crash was looking and looking and looking and Lulu came up with it so yeah, she she, be, she beat him out on the retrieving so that that lab in her you know their, their retriever uh, she's uh, she's got that working out she'll she'll do well now she's how does good. she how does she do on retrieving around just on practice she does really well we, we uh, she brings them right back and then uh, comes and sits right beside me now uh, we've since been out to the game lands for regular pheasant season and, mm -hmm. and uh, one bird fell in the river when it got shot yeah. and uh, Lulu won the race to get there and uh, she beat crash in the river and, and dove in and fetched that bird right out of the That's river right. so dr. Zig hit one and hit, hit, the, <laughs> hit the stream and it was flowing downstream and she jumps her right off the off the bank and grabs it it was pretty nice 
So, that would have been a nice video. Yeah, we didn't have a camera that no. day, but, but we, we certainly got a story about that. So yep. Lu Lulu's got the retrieving part of it down. The finding the bird part, I think that comes as, as time goes yeah. by. She did okay that day. She yep. did real well. Um, I do want to say too, by the way, I appreciate our, our two camera our two camera operators that day, Colin Getter and my daughter Kaylee, were, mm -hmm. were both out helping us that day. And um, uh, again, it was a gorgeous day, and so they had, they oh, had a lot a beautiful of day. they had a lot of fun with that. And um, so having having different perspectives, including we had one point we had a camera on the dog, <laughs> and it kind of it kind of got a little cockeyed. So I'm not sure how, how well that's going to work out. But but um, uh, she's a very active she's a very active yes, girl and, and puts a <laughs> puts a lot of mile puts a lot of miles on there. So uh, you, you'll see I think in some of the video you'll see a little harness on her. And, and the camera, and it didn't take too long for her her movement yeah. to get that camera to sort of it tip, over, tip yeah. over the side. So, so if you want to see if you want to see the show, you know you can sort of lay on lay on your side and watch <laughs> it. It might might be work out better that thing yeah. that way. So, what do you think for the what do you think for down the road for Lula? I think she's going to be great. I think she'll be fine. Yes, I want to get her back to Brian Chase's and stock some birds and <clears throat> get her on uh, some more. Uh, more of a controlled environment, I guess. I think it's a good thing for a young dog to get some, you know, stretch out that season as long as we can mm -hmm. to get them out there early, and then you know get out during the season sometimes and you know stretch it out so the preserve yeah. the preserve they have their their licenses through I think April. I forget if it's beginning or end of April, but there'll be multiple chances to get her out for some additional yeah. work as, as time goes like by. Like you said, we've been out in the, to the game lands and. She runs. It's all social for the first hour for her right now. She <laughs> runs back and forth, and she's just. Uh, yeah. You you remember you remember my dog Jack very well, I and uh, he was he was kind of a runner. He he would really get the birds going and kind of run in straight lines away from you and back, and mm -hmm. would drive me kind of nuts on that. As he got older, he got better. He, he got better about that. And Crash right off the bat has been has been very good about that one. He works very very close and he works hard. Now she doesn't get too far away, so that's no, she a, stays pretty close. That's a good right thing. Now. She's always looking for someone. Well, that's what she's going to say. Either you or she's trying to find somebody. The, the important the important part I think for a dog is to listen to you. Listen listen to the master, you yes. know. And, and uh, if she gets to far away and then you know check it back oh where, where are you where are yeah, you a little you know? whistle she comes right back so that's a, I think that's a, a an important skill for the dog and it's like people wonder if there's any magic I think you get the dog to listen to you, you get, not not Lulu I mean she's about as fit as you're ever gonna get a, a lab um, so if you got some energy and some fitness and, and a dog that wants to listen to you and wants to cooperate well she just wants to please too and that's that's awesome that's, just it. that's awesome I, I couldn't be happier with crash for the same thing he wants to you know he, he wants to learn he, he mm -hmm. works hard and uh, he, he wants to make you happy so yeah you'll see you'll see him I think even in in the video you can see him stop and checking you know looking know. to see looking to see where we he are jumps up up goes the bird. Now, when the bird flies, you know that um, uh, the, sort of the, the finishing up of a flushing dog is to get them to sit. You know, and I've never, I've never bothered with that. That you know, that, that's that is a point that mm -hmm. you know that, that if you're moving along with you know hunting trials and all that kind of stuff, um, they, they they want you to work on that one. Yeah, um, eh, we could work on that someday. Like I but said, I'm not. Both both I'm both dogs are good learners, <laughs> and they could learn that if uh, yeah. if that was. If I'm that not was a needed. trainer. I'd go out for the social and. Mainly the exercise. If we get birds, we get birds. <laughs> I like, I, we, we like to get Chef Lisa involved here too. So, but by, by the right. way, that's kind of we got a good recipe for you coming up later. But um, certainly hope folks enjoy seeing that that video. The dogs out there. Um, our viewer video show is coming up. So if you're hunting out there, take your camera along and get some video for us because I think those things have been a lot of fun. And uh, deer again, season's coming up. Deer season's a great time for that because usually you're sitting still and you can maybe set a camera up nearby. And mm -hmm. and um, uh, we had um, uh, tried I tried the little. Mobile camera on my hat and same thing it's like it moves around so much it's it's very difficult if you're standing still in your deer stand then you can put that right. camera like on your gun or mm -hmm. you know point it out to to the clearing where you think the deer is going to come out all that so yeah hopefully we'll get some good video of deer to talk about next so uh lulu her first hunt what do you uh, what, do you, what do you think S sum it up for us terry uh, very encouraging very encouraging yes should be good she's going to be a good dog i'm pretty happy me too me too. I'm excited to see Lulu. Uh, Crash has out a buddy working. now. Crash, Crash, a and Lulu. Partner. They can, they can, they can <laughs> get it done together, though. So you know, it's a, a few guys and a few dogs are perfect. You know, yeah. One guy and one dog, you can do it, but it's like inevitably that bird's on the wrong side of the tree from you or whatever. Exactly. You know? Or flies behind you. Or goes, yeah, goes behind you. Two dogs and three guys. That's to me, that's about perfect. Yep, you know, and, I agree. And, um, I think those two are going to be good working together for a long time. So, Lulu, welcome to Crawford County Outdoors, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Lisa. Hey, by the way, um, I should say Wild Games champ, Chef Lisa Beck. Um, have you been getting a lot of, uh, you know, people patting you on the back about that? I've, I've had a few. I've had a few. That was fun. Good, that good. That was a good time. I didn't expect to come in first place. 
but that was fun. Well, you rocked it. You had you had you had it going on. So we'll talk more about that at another okay. time. But yes. um, uh, when I said pheasant recipe, mm -hmm. you jumped on that. So I did. what do you got for today? White chili, pheas white pheasant chili. So okay. It's very good. Give us the give us the, the overview. Okay. Um, you take the pheasant off the bone. I cook the pheasant and I boil it. Okay. And I cook the meat and then I take the pheasant off the bone. I pretty much only use the the breast. And you can use two to three pheasants for this. I've used two. And, um, and then you th oh, throw it all together. It's pretty easy. It is really good. Okay. So, so now I see the things all are boiling yes, here. Yes, getting warm get here. Ready. If you so want to move that over. Uh, what we're we going to brown stuff first uh, we're saute? Just, we're going to saute a little bit. What we did is um, we've got our on medium high, a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of a pan. And I've diced, and I'm going to make sure that gets really hot so it cooks up pretty quick. I've diced up a medium to large onion. And I have two to three cloves of garlic okay. and um, as soon as we know for sure that that's hot enough we're going to put that in there and we're just going to get them going. And you know it's hot enough because it's going to start to steam a little it, bit, kind of start it, to smoke a little bit. It is going to steam gets... a little bit, okay. yeah. So okay. um, we'll give it a minute there and um, and then really it, you know you can make this as healthy as you want it. You can use all reduced sodium um, as far as the beans go and as far as the cream of chicken um, and you know you can lessen that. You can go for low fat but you know it's pheasant. So it's like chicken. And for anybody out there who likes white chicken chili, this is perfect. You can't tell the difference. There's, there's no way you there's can no tell the There's no fat difference. on a pheasant. It's, no. it's about the yeah. healthiest thing you're ever going to have. Right. And with Lulu at your house now, you're probably going to be having to deal with this a lot. I so. agree. I agree. So I, this is definitely a keeper. Okay. This recipe is. Okay. So it looks like we're ready. So I'm going to dump in. The, this, is, this is more on a, the, uh, it's more of a large onion, but you can okay. do a medium or large onion. Do you want me to stir that around Please a little do. bit? Please okay. do. Please do. Let me get all the rest of these out there. So the onion and garlic base, I mean, that's where it's at. Get that flavor going. And then we'll throw the garlic in. And we, you just want to saute it till they're translucent. And I, I guess it's kind of like maybe a lot of game things. They don't have a lot of fat on them, so you have to add some, a something bit of oil. so it doesn't stick and doesn't right. burn and all that, right? Exactly, okay. exactly. So we'll get that going. You know, I was. it's interesting because, you know, pheasants are beautiful. I've always felt that... You know, they're a beautiful bird, they're delicious. Um, but I did a little research and I didn't realize that there are 35 species of pheasant mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. And um, and I didn't also didn't realize that they originated in Asia. The, the native versions of those are the grouse. Right, right. And the, the, the what do they call it? The prairie chicken. Um, the, the wild the chickens. The Hungarian the partridge and, right, and the rough right. grouse around here, of course. Right. Um, the rough grouse is hard to find. They're, they're um, which is our state bird. The official state bird right, of Pennsylvania, right. right? But they're they're more of a woodlands kind of a l less fields mm -hmm. and more hemlocks right. and pine trees. That's kind of, that kind of a thing. Right. I actually haven't even seen one um, for a while. I, once in a while, I'm not sure if crashes they've ever even got one right. actually. Yeah, they are hard to find, and and I wonder though if it's similar to um, when I when I looked at the the information on the pheasant, they don't typically live past three years. A pheasant. So, you know, maybe their lifespan is even shorter, and that's probably, could be, could be, I don't know for sure. Another reason why we don't see them very often. Well, our winters are very hard around here. Right, and, that's true. And they, um, uh, they have a hard time making it through. Even just, a, you know, an hour south, they can right. make it through. But we're just, we're just far enough north, and we get right. that good, heavy snow cover on the ground for sure. long stretches of time. That makes it so they can't find food, so. Right. Isn't it amazing how wonderful that smells? Oh, I know. Already, I know. you know, we haven't really done much. Um, and that looks good. We're going to give it another minute, and then I'm going to start throwing in other ingredients. Okay. But yeah, and I also found that they have an excellent sense of hearing and sight, uh, which makes sense because to avoid predators. Um, well, they the, want to hide from you first, well, yeah, and so they want right. you to walk past. And right. with, with a good dog like Lulu or Crash, they, mm -hmm. that won't happen. Right. And the second they want to run from you, when you when you get their feathers off, you can sort of see their their, their legs are strong. strong. They're they're, yes. they're ready to run, and their their legs aren't really like a chicken. They aren't that tender. Right. So as you said before, maybe you want to just use the breast meat from exactly. the pheasant. Exactly. The thigh meat's okay, you know. And when you get lower on the leg, like the drumstick part, it's all sinewy. It's it's very difficult to get any meat out of that I part. I so. have definitely found that out. So. Okay, so and we've got this going. This looks really good. I'm going to add, it says uh, two cans of um, chicken broth, but I have the large container, which is about 32 ounces. So we're going to pour that in there, Duane. So those cans are like 15 or 16 ounces, so yeah. this is give or take two cans, right? Sure, okay. sure. 
So we're gonna get that in there. And I, you know, you can always buy the kind that doesn't have any MSG, that's low sodium. I was just gonna say, you, you picked the sodium, the low sodium variety? Well, actually, this one is fat-free and organic. Okay. So, you know, there's lots of different kinds out there. So you let that go a little bit, stir it up, and then what you want to add to it is two cans of cream of chicken soup. Okay. Okay, so these are the, sorry you don't get to use the can opener today. I know, I, I, know was, you I like practiced, that. I practiced even, okay. I know you like that, but we've got the pop tops, so. While you're stirring that, I'm gonna throw this in there. We'll just You know what, we should have that as an event for the wild games. What? The left-handed can The left-hand, oh, I think that would be fantastic. Okay, next year, okay, it's All on right. the it's Put on that the on the agenda. Would that be like a timed event, or would that be a skill? Would that be a skill like I a judge, like a judged event for? You could, you could, we could do that. I think we should time it though. I okay. really do. Okay. How fast can you use the left-handed can opener? I'm gonna remember that. I'll, I'll write it down. Okay. I'm good at remembering things. I write it all down. Okay. Great. So you continue to cook that up. And, and mix it and get it all blended together. And then you just really start adding the rest of it and you allow it to come to a boil okay. and then simmer and the flavors will blend. And so we'll, we'll just start adding the rest. Okay. I have two cans, I already opened this. This would have been the fun for you. Ah. Of the Great Northern Beans and they're undrained so you use all the liquid okay. that's in them. So we'll get that in there as well. Right. Okay. And we have a seven ounce, ounce can of green chilies. Okay. So they're going to give a little bit of zip to it. A little bit of zip. But well, not, to the, not to the point where you're going to be crying whenever you eat it. Right, right. And I had taken off uh, two breasts from the pheasants. Okay. So we're going to add that right in. And that was parboiled that already. Was, yep, it was. So it okay. just needs to go in there. And we're going to add a 16 ounce can or container of sour cream. Wow, okay. Yeah. So it's really a creamy um, type of soup. And you know, uh, my boys like tortillas and cheese and you know, the, having those toppings, they, that works really well with this. Okay. So as you're doing that, I'm gonna grab the spices. I have, it calls for two teaspoons of salt but I lower that a little bit, make it about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. Um, I did use reduced sodium uh, Great Northern Beans, and you can do that. You can reduce okay. the sodium of everything, but I only did a little bit, so I... I, I um, Boy, the sour cream made it feel it much thicker. It makes nice and yeah. thick, right. Now, as it cooks down, it will okay. um, you know, thin out a little bit, but so it's really, it's a teaspoon of pepper and about a little over a teaspoon of salt. So we're gonna add okay. that in there. I actually don't need all that salt. And then we have two teaspoons of oregano and two teaspoons of cumin. Okay. Lots of nice, good, you know, really delicious spices. And the last spice is a, about a fourth of a teaspoon of either cayenne or red pepper, crushed red pepper. So I'm just gonna put a tiny handful in there because you don't wanna overdo it. And you know, you can add what you want, however, you know, however hot you know that you can add the heat that you want you don't have to overdo it at first and then you could add more later my kids like to put hot sauce on it okay you know <laughs> and i don't like it that hot so i don't overdo it with that it's hard to undo it's hard to unring that bell isn't it? it it is and so really this needs to come to a boil and then let it simmer for a little while and you're good and that and that's that's your soup that looks great already right and you know we have magic of television too <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be able to uh, sample here soon. Lisa, isn't it interesting when it's time to sample that you know we get we draw a crowd. Gavin's joining us we now. Do, we of course, do. Ga Gavin, uh, Lulu is your dog, and she's the one who got some of these pheasants here. So this yeah. is a good this is a good thing, right? It is. It is. And it's smelling great. Too, it by smells the way. great, and I know our viewers are probably wondering why we have this crock pot out here. But um, as you know, sometimes it takes a little while to allow something to simmer, bring it to a boil, and simmer. So I had made a second batch of this last night and just heated up in my crock pot to for our tasting yes. and dinner yes. shortly thereafter. So we're all set. So are you ready, Dwayne? Yes. Okay. There we go. Mm. This is a very, very good recipe. And here we go. Dwayne. 
Gavin, I heard you like it kind of spicy. Is that right? He does. Yeah, attaboy. He does. Gav, this one's yours. I see the green chilies. Yep. I see the pheasant in there. there. Some nice pieces Wait of onion. Us. Okay. We Are we ready, that, everybody? Put that cover back on there. My okay. favorite part of the show, Lisa. Mine as well. Mm. What do you think? Mm. I agree with you. That's a keeper. It is. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Definitely. A little Gavin, spice to Gavin, it. Gavin, what do you think? It's not spicy enough for him. More so ice, okay. Yeah. Just like you said, you can always add a little bit more. That's right, but you can't take it away. So be careful on the spice, but add to your liking. And if you have to add a little more after the fact for your son, you go ahead and do that. So. Well, Chef Lisa, that's great. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. So the, the next time, whenever we talk pheasant, you're going to be coming up with something new. This was great. I can't wait till next time. I can't wait till next time as well. I bet the folks at home, same thing. They can't wait till next right, time. So right. thank you at home for joining us on Crawford County Outdoors today. We'll talk to you next time.